everybody, and welcome to another episode of Small Business Small Talk. And today, we're going to talk about culture, company culture to be exact. My last video, I talked about competitive advantage, and of which culture is an element that can give you a competitive advantage in the marketplace. So, do you know what your culture is? If you are a solopreneur, it might be a little harder to define because you think it's just you. It's not just you, remember. You have clients, you have strategic partners, you have vendors, you have people that you interact with on a regular basis. And if you're not, shame on you, get out a little bit more. There's virtual networking too. So you, you've got to be able to get out. You do interact with people. If you have a small business that has employees, how are they interacting? Culture boils down to, what is culture really? So culture boils down to the beliefs and behaviors a group of people have together when they interact with each other and the outside world, okay? Some people will say just the outside world, but the outside world doesn't have to interact with you to know what your culture is, okay? Just be aware of that. When you have people interacting together, how does your team work together? How are you interacting with other people? How are you sharing the communication? How are you playing nice together? Can you all play in the sandbox at the same time? Kind of thing. What does that look like? And why is culture even important in the first place? So remember, we are doing business with people. Ultimately, we are still people businesses. I don't care if you're making a widget or if you're selling a service. A person is buying it. <laughs> so remember, we're appealing to that person. All right. So co company culture can be a competitive advantage because if you're wanting to grow your business and you need to attract new clients, your culture can be the thing that attracts new clients. So think back to Zappos as an example. Uh, mind you, Amazon bought Zappos. But remember Zappos. Zappos CEO said, your culture is your brand. So if we start thinking about culture becoming part of marketing, which is branding, the culture now is something that we can message out. That becomes the competitive advantage. Okay, great. What do we do with that? Because 80% of you out there have not been intentional about forming a culture, like understanding what the culture actually is, doing something with it, being intentional about developing the culture that you want. So if you haven't even started on this, where do you start? Well, first place is, so we're going to, bear with me, one, You want to become more aware. Awareness is the first key step to pretty much anything, okay? So become more aware. Let's figure out what is really going on. Watch your people. Get feedback from your clients, vendors, strategic partners, anybody that has seen you guys or you interact. What is your personality telling the world? How is your personality communicating what's important to you guys out there? Get that feedback. Become aware of what's going on. The second thing is now we have the opportunity to define it. I use a concept every time I train on something. Who we are determines what we do and how we do it. And where those things intersect, you know, think the Venn diagram over here. Where it intersects right here gives us the opportunity to ask why. Why are we doing the things that we do? Why is this important to us? Why is it not important to us? Ask the why question like a three-year-old. Why? 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 Continue to ask why questions a lot so that you become more aware and you can define it because there's sometimes you're going to find out things that you don't necessarily want to accept and you can change it. You can be purposeful about defining what you want your culture to look like. The next thing is, how do you want to present that to the world? What is the presentation of your culture? And what I mean by that, and specifically for culture, is that if we're talking about branding a little bit, 
how are we talking about our culture? We've become aware, we've defined it, but now we need to present it to people, like really instill that this is what our culture is like. So think about it as a business owner. If you're hiring new people and they're not on board with our definition of culture, they might not last very long. You might make a bad hire if they are not going to be a good fit for your culture. Just saying. The other thing is, is whenever you're presenting your culture as part of your branding, then the outside world starts to know what you're all about, how you guys interact, and they quickly decide they want to be a part of that. It's, you know, Seth Godin, the other people out there, other great speakers and, and thought leaders of the day, kind of call it your tribe. You know, what? What people are you attracting in your tribe? Well, define it. What kind of people do you want to attract in your tribe? You can be more intentional about that. And the last thing is implementation. This is where you go in to instill it. This is on a consistent basis. A one-time shot of telling people isn't going to work. If you have created a vision statement anywhere, and you're not sharing that on a daily basis, the vision becomes stale. You, It kind of goes away. Same thing about your culture. You can either let it just develop organically, which a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want your culture to become a competitive advantage in the marketplace, you want to go through this process to be intentional about it. You want to be able to implement it on a consistent basis, and part of that implementation is working with your team to understand, we do have a culture here. This is what our culture looks like. What do we like about it? And keep going on those strengths that people love coming to work for you because they love what we do. And oh, by the way, it's kind of called culture. If you don't want to call it culture, come up with some other cool name. I don't know. This is your your gang, your hangout group, your, uh, your buddies, your peeps, your whatever. It's part of your tribe, right? It's the people that... You, this is the reflection. How are you presenting your culture? This is the reflection of that culture. So long-winded, but here's the process to help define the culture because your culture can become the competitive advantage in the marketplace. Your culture can also attract better hires, your ideal client, and a better positive attitude for you in a day. So even if you're a solopreneur out there, do this. Because if you want to create a culture for people to work with you, strategic partners, vendors, things like that, when you're out networking, you want to be able to attract a certain kind of person into your network naturally. When this is defined, that person's going to show up. It happens like magic. Don't know why. It just does. Probably because you've worked through a process and people are getting it because you are presenting it and are implementing it on a consistent basis. It's clearly defined. This is what we're about. And people will gravitate to that. Guaranteed. So with that, that is the small business small talk for today. If you have any questions or you'd like to chat about this, by all means, contact me. I love talking business all the time, especially when it involves people. That's pretty much every single time. So if you have any questions, cares, concerns, please let me know. You can contact me through my website or on Facebook, on LinkedIn, find me anywhere. And if you have an idea of a topic that you would like to have covered in Small Business Small Talk, please let me know. And I want to invite everybody to the Kentuckiana Small Business Summit coming up October 27th. So save the date for that. Definitely going to be a great day for that topic so far. If you're in small business, you're going to start from the beginning and go to the end. So we're going to look at what a lean startup model would be and talk about succession planning. So that's your end. And we're going to work on some things in the middle. It's going to be a very interactive day. Uh, it's 8.30 to 3, so it's not a complete day. And hopefully I'm going to work in a happy hour. We'll see how we can do that too. So that's a little bit about that shameless plug at the end. Thank you for joining today's Small Business Small Talk, and I'll see you again soon.